It's the final game of match day four. An opportunity for the top seed of the table for one Knoxville who play host to South Georgia Tormenta, who look to overtake pole position in League One. A fight for first place in League One on ESPN+. Hello and welcome, I'm Ryan Lee. So happy with you today. And this is the final match of the week, which can determine the new leader in League One when it's all said and done. Knoxville started the league with their first taste of the top spot in the short franchise history. However, it got overtaken by Greenville in last night's win over Lexington. Knoxville will catapult themselves to nine points with a win and a tie for first with a draw. Tormenta wins today, they'll tie with Greenville for the top seed. Knoxville has busted the vault door wide open with a lockdown defense and an explosive offense. Four goals by four different goal scorers, which is third in League One. Only two matches in the books, and Knoxville's goal total is top three in the league. Anchored by 31-year-old Honduran Angelo Kelly, both of his games resulted in Team of the Week honors, as he leads all of League One in assists and chances created. Last year's second team, All League One, will look to continue being the energizer for this one knock side. Tormenta has stormed with a thunderous entry and a lightning fast offense. Their five goals are now second in the league as they look to continue driving forward, doing so with precision passing and a lot of gas in the tanks. Despite starting the year with a loss and a draw, Tormenta earned their first win last week versus Richmond in a three to one domination. Niall Watson takes the driver's seat as the league leader in goals. He's the only League One player with multiple goals. The 23-year-old Englishman will try to increase his goal total, continuing to lead the way for South Georgia. A chance for the top seed in League One as Knoxville needs a single point to join Greenville in pole position. Tormenta looks to hop onto the top. Knoxville and Tormenta lineups and kickoff next on ESPN+. A warm and windy day in Knoxville, Tennessee at Regal Soccer Stadium where one Knoxville and South Georgia Tormenta will look for the much needed three points and a chance to take the top spot in USL League One. Starting lineups are brought to you by KUB Fiber and Mark McKeever's formula today is simple. If it isn't broken, don't fix it. Of the 11 starters in last week's match versus Lexington, 10 are in the exact same spot. Only one change in Knoxville's 4-4-2, which is Sean O'Hearn is out for today's matchup. James Thomas will take his place at the right back position, number 40. The 
the top offense in League One coming into the match day will continue generating their goal scoring pedigree. And Solid Georgia Tormento wants to shake things up with their 4 3 3 from their match in Richmond last week. Tormenta keeps the exact same back five, but the front six sees a lot of shakeups. Spangler, Watson, and Doyle are the only guys in, bla in black that are still starting from last week's win. Gabriel Rodriguez has inserted himself into the top three, adding up to five goal contributions across that three-man forward line. Steedman is also now in, and Mason Turnbridge, he put that final nail in Richmond's coffin to double up the lead in the 90-plus, earning his second career start in League One. As both teams take the pitch, they are both looking for the coveted first place position in the USL League One. It's a very warm and windy day, 75 degrees Fahrenheit and a 15 mile per hour wind coming from the southwest, which in the trajectory of this pitch is actually gonna to be towards the crowd side as One Knoxville are gonna be in their whites, Tormenta in the all blacks. As we can see that wind is just coming all the way in. That's a solid 15 miles per hour. So we could see how some of the conditions can play into some of these matches. We saw it last night in that Central Valley and Madison game, how that rainstorm just kept pelting over and over again. We saw the same thing in Richmond hosting Tormenta last week as well. That was also a relatively windy game. But both of these teams have been able to generate no matter when, where, what the conditions are, both on the pitch and off, as both head coaches have been preaching their team's ability to roll with the punches, continuing to stay composed no matter what happens. And when it's all said and done, it's all about continuing to just build on their identity and just continuing to do what they do best. South Georgia Tormenta won one and one in three games played to start things off. Their only game on the road was against Madison in Central Valley, which were at home. Their one road game was in Richmond as we are underway. Knoxville, the visitors. Knoxville at home, Tormenta, the visitors. Tormenta in black, left to right. Knoxville in all white from right to left. Tormenta only one road game, which was last week against Richmond, that three to one win where they just dominated the game all the way through. Tormenta in their second game of the season here at Regal Soccer Stadium. First one was last week in that 2-0 shutout versus Tormenta. First possession comes all the way deep and provides the first opportunity for a Tormenta throw. We've been mentioning the pitch conditions. It's 75, it's clear, but that 15 mile per hour wind, you can see with those flags behind that sitting room area for those fans that that wind is just gonna be swirling all day around. It started off coming from the far side to the near side, and now it's going the opposite direction. So who knows how that's gonna change throughout the match. But Tormenta managing fine as they continue to advance up the field. But the first foul of the game right near center as Ajmer Spangler gets knocked down along the way. Spangler just took that contact from Jalen Chrysler along that far edge. Spangler got his first assist in League One last week on the 2-0 goal where he set up now Watson on the breakaway, beating Pablo Hara for the 2-0 lead as the ball comes all the way back for a goal kick. We can see with those pine trees behind the net of Ford Parker as well, just how that's gonna affect things in the long run. That's gonna be a quick dump off to Jake Dangler. Tormenta controlling possession early and Head coach Ian Cameron has been talking about how his team has just been able to get those total team efforts. And it's one of those things that just happens when everything goes well, when everyone's working together, when everyone's on the same page, those 
results really begin to show. And every week is all about total team efforts, having some of the D-men step up on the offense. We saw that. Connor Doyle, defensive midfielder, scored a goal last week. We also saw some of the offensive players come back on defense. We talked about that Spangler assist on the Watson goal. That was off of a Spangler strip in the defensive end. So when everyone's playing their part, everyone's contributing around, that is kind of that total package that Tormenta's head coach Ian Cameron really praises amongst his South Georgia side. Knoxville holds it back in their own end. Stuart Ritchie, he was a nominee for the League One Team of the Week last week with his first goal of the season. But it circles its way all the way around to the far side. Stuart Ritchie. Ritchie wanted to poke that one in, but was disrupted by Watson. Ritchie back on it. Ritchie hesitates a little too long, but Knoxville maintains. Out wide, Ross. Ross on Nakoto, but comes all the way back. Howgley to Kelly. As we've been mentioning throughout the Open, both of these teams so strong on the offensive side. South Georgia, Tormenta, five goals. That was first going into the match day, but after some of the all the three games of the week, they dropped down to second. Knoxville, same deal, four goals, was second going into the week, but after the other three matches commenced, they dropped down to third. So there's a potential that this can either be a shootout or the way that these two teams have been defending could be just a slugfest as well. Tormenta, sprinting all the way down, Lombardi. Turnbridge goes back and forth with Spangler. And now a retreat for Jake Dangler. Long chip shot, centering up in front, leaves it. Watson was denied by Richie. Tormenta keeps that one in, but the right footer just goes way overhead. And we saw the first goal kick for Parker. Now Lewis gets the first chance at a goal kick. Five minutes in, both teams have had a load of chances and a nice little chip pass up in front. Juan Gabriel Rodriguez was not there. Got the second opportunity, was just smacked at by Lombardi. But both of these teams showing their offensive aggression early. Five minutes in, already one shot attempt apiece. Koto disrupts the pass intended for Richie and comes out of play. James Thomas. Haugli. Knoxville still with it, just maintaining this one on their back line. Out wide for Richie, he has Akoto on a foot race. Richie centers before it gets deflected out of play by Dangler. And that produces the first corner for Knoxville. One up fan, make some noise for a corner kick. Brought to you by University Orthopedic Surgeon. Here's me, Callum Johnson, who will send this one in off of that near side corner. Johnson, too high, nothing available. Throw in Tormenta. Knoxville off to a very hot, hot start to their season. Two matches in League One play couple of wins 
If you add in the US Open Cup, they've started with three consecutive wins with a total goal margin in those three wins of six to one. So Knoxville has just not just been able to show their ability to take teams down in League One play. They've been able to do it across all leagues and competitions. So Knoxville has it at center. On Hello Cutty. Pitch out wide, Johnson and Kelly exchange it. Johnson wanted Ross, but could not quite get it there. But Knoxville with the throw. Trying to go quick. John Rush is the four, fourth official. Jake Brochu and Kevin Hewitt are the assistant referees with Josiah Park leading things off today in that green kit right at center. He has to avoid out of the way, but Knoxville takes the pass out wide. Richie on the near side. Richie on a Koto. Drops it off back. Haugli. Haugli goes for goal, but is overhead and gets lost in the bushes. They're gonna need a chainsaw to find that one. That one's gonna be stuck in some branches. But it's kind of been that common trend all season with both of these teams. They wanna use that first 10 to 15 minutes to feel each other out, try to figure out their weaknesses as Kelly capitalizes off of the miscue and the turnover. Wanted the drive up the center, but Callum Johnson can't quite control the bounce and He's just gonna drag Steedman down for a whistle against Knoxville. Dangler whiffs and a turnover back for Knoxville. Callum Johnson blocked up in front by Doyle. Akoto holds and stripped away. Angelo Kelly. Pass it. Haugli goes for goal and Ford Parker swallows it up. Silvert Haugli looking for his first goal of the season, but Ford Parker is right there along the way. A nice little dump off. Haugli was able to find the open space, but Dangler was able to pursue just at the final moment to disrupt things along the way, and now Tormenta have it back the other side. Gabriel Rodriguez interrupted. As Knoxville's back on their own end. Lombardi and Kelly collide, but Lombardi comes away with it. And that last deflection off of Lombardi produces the second corner for Knoxville. A new era of USL kicks off in April. Join us Saturday, April 6th on CBS as Louisville City takes on Indy 11 at 4 p.m. Eastern at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, kicking off the first ever national broadcast of the USL on CBS. Stuart Ritchie on the far end. Ritchie cleared away, but not out as the ball finds its way back to Ritchie again. Ritchie wants the center, deflect up in front, loose ball, gets poked away by Tormenta. Kelly able to loft that one in. A centering feed, scramble in front, no one can quite get there, and Tormenta finally says goodbye. A nice set piece to start things off for Tormenta, capitalizing on their second opportunity. The clearance, just boxing their man out. And that's the key of the defense for Tormenta, is keeping the guys out of the box and not having Ford Parker to really force things out. 
It's one of those things that we talked about when we were having our discussions with head coach Ian Cameron was, it's nice that Fort Parker is leading the league in saves, but when it's all said and done, we don't want it to come down to that. We want as few balls to come to Parker as possible. And it's great for when those balls do come to Parker that he's able to make the stop as he continues to lead the league in saves. As speaking of Parker, he'll take the goal kick. Select is the official match ball provider of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select is the player's choice. Tormentos sends that one away. Rodriguez wanted the drop down for Spangler, but it was not available. Centering for Turnbridge. A little bit far and out of reach for Tormenta, so Knoxville takes over on the throw. Jalen Chrysler with a turnover off the throw, and now Tormenta possesses. Sent in and just gently bouncing straight into the arms of Sean Lewis. Golden Glove winner and second team all league one a season ago. Top five in saves. Just gives that one away short. Long drive. And that one just died right before it got to Richie. Turnbridge. Gets the return. Wanted the touch up in front before Steedman got the touch up. Spangler went down on the deflection. Pass up in front was just touched up by Spangler. Had the intended target, Steedman. But Dangler comes all the way back for Preston Kilwine. Lombardi for Ford Parker. Sent away, but not out. Angelo Kelly keeps this one in. Ross finds a lane, spins it out. Richie chases after that one. Haugli and Richie a miscommunication, but still not out. Richie pokes it all the way back. Drive for Callum Johnson, but it was stopped up by an obstacle. Knoxville keeping this one in, deep inside the Tormenta end. Kelly. Knoxville still threatening. Frank Ross tries to ring around his men as that one just gets lofted overhead, but a touch up provides the third corner of the game for one Knox. Only one shot on target has gone to Knoxville and was off of the previous corner. Richie to take again. Corner in, headed away, but still for Knoxville, but not for long. Kelly with the overhead kick. Lombardi and Richie wanted that one on the far side, but it just gets sent away and all the way back towards the center line.
last week's team of the week for week three at four players from Knoxville, which was the most in League One. They really had that dominating win against Lexington last week. It didn't just give those four guys their nominations, but also helped Knoxville overtake the first place seed on the League One table after that two to one win. It was the first time in their club history that they have ever been in first place in the league and they want to regain it here. Any result for Knoxville will either tie them or surpass Greenville for number one. If Tormenta is able to get the three points by inserting themselves into the W column today, they'll jump to eight points and they will be the number one seed all alone. But Knoxville has it back. Near side, Fernandez sends this one back to Chrysler. Thomas, and it's Kelly. Wanted Ross, a takedown. Knoxville wants a penalty, none given. Turnbridge turns around, continues to pirouette as he just places that one back for Lombardi who arches all the way for Akoto. Dangler gets a takedown and a foul and the Knoxville fans not happy about that, believing they had that penalty just outside of the corner of the box. As we take a look here, Frank Ross, he just got knocked down from behind by Kilwine. Ross couldn't believe it. Kilwine wagged the finger. But nonetheless, foul all the way back in the Tormenta end and Parker will send it off. And some contact inside of the Knoxville end on Gabriel Rodriguez. Skelton will be marked down for that. And this could potentially draw the first true opportunity for Tormenta. They haven't really had much as we see the possession numbers have been pretty well in the favor of Knoxville. Tormenta also only has a single shot attempt, none on target. Turnbridge deflected ahead out of play. But Akoto was threatening along that far side post. And Knoxville will concede the first corner of the match. You can still see the way that the conditions are affecting the pitch with that flag as Doyle sends it in. Killwine. As the drive comes up in front, no one able to get it. Spangler recovers. Spangler kicks out wide. Doyle into the box. Just ping pongs around, nothing available. But a whistle against Tormenta. Knoxville will take over. First 20 plus minutes in the first half. Both of these teams have generated the offense like we expected. What is going to be the icebreaker though? What will be what eventually changes the tide of this match? Knoxville inching their way further towards the Tormenta side. As a long shot is just out of the reach of Parker. That was Rudy Castro on that shot. Had himself a goal last week against Lexington. Was also one of the members of that team of the week.
as ball gets played all the way back on the Knoxville side. Nice through ball along the far side, just a little bit too far for Johnson. And a goal kick for Tormenta. Broken up, finds his way directly to Rudy Castro. Ross. Richie centers. Disrupted along the way, but Knoxville keeps it in. Kelly. Kelly wants to chip that one in, but it goes off of a Tormenta player. One up fan makes a noise. And another corner kick upcoming for Knoxville. Just under 25 minutes into this match. As Knoxville wins their fourth corner. Driven high, headed away. That one deflects off of Jack Doyle en route to the net. So the throw in continues for Knoxville. Knoxville arguing a potential foul inside of the box and a potential handball. They do still have the throw deep inside the Tormenta end though, so. Not all is necessarily lost. As we take another look at this one off of that long drive. And I can absolutely see Tormenta's point. Doyle had his arms relatively elevated, kind of in preparation for the leap. But nonetheless, play on. Sent into the box, out of reach. Parker, goal kick. Fans, welcome to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix. Throughout the month of March, the USL will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and CBS platforms. Ball deflected off of Knoxville, out of play, throw in Tormenta. You know, Mark McKeever's been really happy about the start that his team has provided, however, when we tried to give him his flowers, he did say any team can produce that and everything is just a start. But he did say that as of right now, in terms of their progression towards their end destination, they're in a great place, but they still have a long way to go. At the end of the day, they want to play with humility, understand that this is just a start. But he didn't, but he did say it could be a sign of what's to come. So he's not negating the possibility of continuing going on a roll. He just doesn't want to make a big deal out of it because it's only two matches in, three if you include the Open Cup. Stoppage in play off of the whistle. We've been seeing these two teams square off back and forth, and this can absolutely continue on as Richie plays the ball out of play. As going into the week prior to any games being played on the match day, both Tormenta and Knoxville were second and third. Knoxville was second, Tormenta was third in terms of shot attempts and shots on goal. So they, are, they know how to press deep in the offensive end. They know how to just continue to drive the offense, get the ball to the net, create havoc up in front of the respective netminders. 
And I expect very much the same as Kelly wants to go quick on the free kick as Casho pitches out wide. Sent in, Kelly deflected. And a goal kick for Parker. Kelly was not at all expecting that. The Tormenta carries on. Watson. To the far side, Aaron Lombardi. And a huge collision right at center. That's Silver at Haugli and Daniel Steedman. Haugli still slow. And just after that first touch up by Fernandez, Haugli got the leg up, got the, just clipped the ball. Steedman was barreling up in front and Haugli is still a little slow to get up. But now he's on his feet. 24 year old Norwegian. Spent last year in Norway with Moss in the first division. This isn't his first stint in the States, however, as he spent some time with the Portland Timbers 2 of MLS Next Pro and is now in his first season with Knoxville. Fernandez. Skelton to Chrysler. As Kelly. Stuart Ritchie calling for it. He gets it. Ritchie wanted the left foot again, but it comes off of Akoto. That's how he scored his goal of the week last week against Lexington. That left footer along that left wing, curling it into the far post. He wanted that exact shot again. Now Ritchie off the left foot. Comes over and out of play. With the way that these guys have been playing, plus some condition that might affect some things. Those volunteers gotta be careful because of that train and behind the pitch, but everything's good so far. Parker's to take the goal kick. In a scoreless match between one Knoxville and South Georgia Tormenta. You can still see that wind blowing all the way around, affecting everything. So we're a half an hour deep. Final game of League One in match day four. Stolen away by Knoxville once more. Ross. Johnson getting interrupted by Steedman and just easily chipped all the way back. Richie on the near side. Wants Ross, cannot quite win the race as he just plows through the end boards. Frank Ross has been very effective to start things off as him and Doyle were scrapping up against the touchline. A big time size mismatch too, when you consider that collision against the end boards. Ross 6'0", 159, Jack Doyle 6'2", 170. But this is something we could potentially see all game long, those physical battles, those tightly contested matchups. In fact, Ian Cameron said that he doesn't want it to be outworked that the physicality is something that Tormenta is actually embracing. However, they don't want to see it too much because it's going to potentially wear them down in the long run. And he actually credited Mark McKeever as they're very similar as Castro has a man all alone. Castro blocked in front by Kilwine. Rudy Castro was all alone and Preston Kilwine had to slide in to disrupt the play. And we were just talking about how tightly contested these physical battles are going to get. They're going to put bodies on each other, and they're going to play very similarly. Both of these teams know how to lay the body against each other, lay out for the blocks, interrupt balls along the way, go shoulder to shoulder with someone, and they've been doing just that. 
as Knoxville earns another corner. Foul, Knoxville, Tormenta ball. Tormenta just getting pestered by Knoxville. As it's sent all the way, 4-1 Knox, they'll earn the throw. Sean Lewis to Danny Fernandez. So we got just a little over 10 minutes before the end of the first half. Neither team have broken through yet. Skelton. And a man on a long ball interrupted along the way by Lombardi, so Knoxville would take it. Inside of the Tormenta end. Tormenta being able to really show what they're made of despite being the second youngest roster in the league. It's also their second straight road game before they go back to South Georgia and get a four game homestand as Knoxville at home want to make something go. Ross drops it off. Sent into the box, unable to find Richie. But Kelly keeps it in the possession of one Knox. Haugli. Wants it up the center, has Ross. Ross! Punched away by Parker! Ford Parker continues to get it done. Continues leading the league in saves, had the save of the week, and now Knoxville chips it in once again. The chest was down, wanted to just leave it for Castro on the volley, but Knoxville has it back once again. Kelly. Angelo Kelly from range, he scores! Oh my goodness! Angelo Kelly with a rocket of a shot to take the lead! Angelo Kelly, oh my word, an absolute missile into the top of the frame, just using all of the left foot to beat Parker along the way for the one nil lead. Angelo Kelly leads the league in total goal contributions. He extends that lead, two goals, add on his two assists with four total goal contributions on the season. Thirty-six minutes in. That was the 10th shot attempt for one Knox. The third on frame finally beats Ford Parker. He had no chance on Angelo Kelly as with a deflection like that for Stuart Ritchie, he had no chance to keep that one in play. Two 
two-time Team of the Week in only two matches played. An assist last week versus Lexington. Game one in Charlotte, a goal and an assist as the feed for now Watson was a little bit out of his reach. Watson and Kelly are now tied for the league lead in goals. Devin Boyce from Ford Madison inserted himself into that combination as well. So Boyce, Watson, and Kelly are now tied for the league lead at goals with two apiece. Knoxville keeping possession. Fernandez for Skelton. Angelo Kelly is getting double teamed now. Could be a potential different look on D as Knoxville looks to expose that D, but it's offside anyways. Park able to make the snag regardless. But the flag went up just as Ross was corralling that opportunity. Mento has it deep in the Knoxville end. Sent in one of the touch up by Rodriguez, but Spengler was unable to convert on the feed. So Lombardi gets the throw. Wanted to go fast for Spengler, but he's just locked up right now. Goes to Spengler anyways. Spengler dragged down by James Thomas. And James Thomas gets dragged down by Spengler for the whistle. Spangler's been getting beat up. This is the second time on the ground in the half, as we still have five minutes to go before halftime. Rainbow pass for Knoxville. No foul on the Johnson touch up, but comes all the way back towards Knoxville anyways. Thomas retreats to Skelton, who played for Tormenta from 19 to 2020. Richie wants the curler, Castro, just a little bit too far ahead. So Lombardi has to clip this one up as it comes towards Steedman. At the two number eights, Kelly drags Steedman down. As Tormenta plays it all the way back, Jake Dangler. Wants the long ball, has Niall Watson all alone. Watson, Richie staring right at him. Comes back for Akoto. Turnbridge. Turnbridge wanted the starter stop, but it's tackled along by Kelly. Now a potential fast break for Knoxville. Kelly, ball at his feet, stopped along the way. Steedman had to come back to interrupt. And Kelly shoves down Steedman with the whistle. and the first yellow of the match comes to Angelo Kelly. Just as Daniel Steedman got the steal from Kelly, Kelly in a slight desperation move to win that ball back, takes the first yellow of the match.
just on the doorstep of halftime. As two guys go crashing into the sideboards. Spangler and Chrysler trying to go for the elevation, just inadvertently just bumping into that sidewall. Chrysler trying to make the case that that's a Knoxville possession, but it will go there anyways. Jalen Chrysler, the 25-year-old from Washington. He's been just a staple in terms of staying on the pitch, has over 27 matches played in each of the past three seasons. He's been a staple on the back line. But the back line advances into the front end. Richie, wanted center, gets deflected along. Castro and Akoto chase after that, so it produces Another corner kick for Knoxville. Knoxville with their sixth corner of the match. Tormenta still only has one. And Knoxville has the edge on the scoreboard as we approach the half. Driven in, deflected home, bounces up and just goes wide of the post as we have an extra two minutes on the clock. The long drive was just overhead. Silver Haugli using every single inch of his six foot five frame to try anything he can to just chip that one against the goal, but he's just a little off target. As you saw the curve on that ball, how conditions are still playing their part in affecting this match. But clear towards center, Danny Fernandez. Angelo Kelly has nothing but green grass ahead of him, wanted that seam pass, but gets dragged down by Doyle anyway, so the possession comes into Knoxville regardless. Knoxville's also been so precise on their passing. They've converted 86% of their passes, which is just such a great margin if you want to talk about advancing the ball up in play. And it's not even just quick passes. They're even trying to stretch passes, trying those through balls. They've been really generating everything they've been able to. They've been controlling this game for much of the duration. As this one gets lofted in, a little bit too wide off of the free kick for James Thomas. And we're in the second minute of stoppage. Ford Parker might just be allowing this half to end. Parker sends this one away. Just pinballing back and forth between the two sides as retreats back to Parker. As that goes, the first half whistle. Knoxville wants to keep the train rolling and want to retake first place in League One. Angelo Kelly with the lone goal in the 36th minute sets Knoxville up on top. A tightly contested matchup and a whipping wind and warm day in Knoxville. 
One Knox has the lead, 1-0. We are at halftime. More coming up next. We're back here at Regal Soccer Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, where the home side has a one to nil lead against the visiting South Georgia Tormenta. Despite it being a short week in League One, we can't say it hasn't been an uneventful one. There's been a lot of action across all of the four games in League One. We start off in Charlotte, where they hosted Spokane and Charlotte was able to knock things off as Joel Johnson kicks off the scoring in that match. And then Javier Martin was able to come back on the other side to get the first goal for Spokane to level things off at one. However, this one will come down to the wire. It took until the 90 plus six for Luis Alvarez to send a chip in, was able to beat the Spokane netminder all the way through. Carlos Ben Valdez for the two to one win over Charlotte. One final chance was held on by Charlotte. And over on the CBS Golasso Network, we had Lexington and Greenville. This was essentially the game for the number one seed last game. And this was, for lack of a better definition, it was an absolute shootout between the two sides. Five goals combined between these two teams as we see the chance for Lexington up in front to tie this game. And there was just chances galore for both sides as Greenville trying to get things to go at halftime. And right at the brink of the final whistle, Triumph give away the own goal. And this was the match last night in Central Valley in Fresno. A couple of absolute beauties of some goals with the back heel setting up Devin Boyce. He was the second player of the season with that goal to earn two goals in the league. And then that final yellow card for Garcia turns the second into a red. Madison walks away from Central Valley with a three nil win and the shutout. From across League One, we finish match day four here in Knoxville, where the home side has a 1-0 lead. More from around the league coming up. Go get it, Doug. When termites show up, so do we. 
Terminix it. We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Yeah, we run in the game. We're coming in strong. Great. Oh. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. We're back here in Knoxville, Tennessee, where the home side won Knoxville, still holds the 1-0 lead over South Georgia Tormenta, visiting from down south, as the League One and USLC have so much going on in such little time. We've been talking about it all week. The USL Championship will be debuting on CBS and their network on CBS with Louisville City at Lynn Family Stadium playing host for the Indy 11 on the 6th at 4 p.m. Eastern while Sacramento Republic inks a five-year extension with UC Davis Health, the largest and longest sponsor in club history, working to progress towards childhood wellness. And the USL Jägermeister Cup, this World Cup-style tournament, was trying to continue the modifications with this wave of in-season tournaments looking to increase the dynamic play. Speaking of dynamic players, Lots of them coming from the team of the week of week three. We've been talking about all game long. There are four members of this one Knoxville side who have that lead up against it. Angelo Kelly was one of them. Rudy Castro, Stuart Ritchie, and Danny Fernandez, all a part of the team of the week. While South Georgia Tormenta brought in three players for the team of the week. Spangler Doyle and head coach Ian Cameron, all headlined with Louis Heal from Spokane leading the way. And from across all of League One, Next week, another short match day slate, but that's not without a lack of action across the board. Richmond and Central Valley Fuego will go at it. They'll both look to recover off of taking the respective losses in their respective matches. Greenville will look to either continue their first place run or look to overtake it from whoever ends up winning this matchup as they play host at Northern Colorado. And Tormenta comes back home to play against another team of the 2023 expansion class in Lexington SC, all on the ESPN Plus platforms. As we carry on here in Knoxville, we will look for the continuation and the conclusion of the second half. One Knox up on Tormenta 1 0. Second half after this. The all new Volkswagen ID4 SUV is truly something to behold. On the outside, clean aerodynamic lines. On the inside, plenty of room with a spacious, comfortable cabin. It will transform how you think about electric cars. Now available at Harper Volkswagen and at HarperVolkswagen.com.
half highlights as it's been a very eventful game despite only one goal on the board. Both sides have really been able to capitalize on their opportunities and this one just came in the first 10 minutes. That reflection up in front, Castro was unable to get the sweep in there and Killwine and Lombardi were all over that one to eventually get the clear out. As first opportunity came the other way for Tormenta, they've really been struggling with good opportunities, but they've been high danger as Killwine came in late to disrupt Castro along the way in the 36th minute. This was what has really tilted the game in the scales of one Knoxville. An absolute heat-seeking missile from Angelo Kelly from well outside the box. Ford Parker had no shot as Knoxville has the 1-0 lead. As we take a look at the halftime stats for this match, we've been talking about how Knoxville has more or less really been putting their stamp on the early part of this game, and they have absolutely done so. And this is just further evidence of one Knoxville's ability to really push the pace of this game. 11 shots, three on target. Tormenta has two shots, neither of them really relatively in the direction of Sean Lewis. Possession, 60% in favor of Knoxville. South Georgia just shy of 40%. And this is another thing that we really don't really talk about is the ability to generate that offense deep inside of the opposing end. Knoxville's been able to do a lot of that. Note that corner number. They have six corners in the first half. That is evidence that Knoxville has been able to not only get the possession, get the chances, but they're getting that ball deep and they're threatening often. And oftentimes, Tormenta has had to either have some excellent play from Parker or some of the four guys up in front on the D-line as they continue on for the second half Harlop. One Knoxville scored first in the 36th. They are 3-0-0 when scoring first if you include the Open Cup match. If you go League One only, it's 2-0-0. So across the 2024 season, they've been really able to not only get on the board early, but they're able to maximize those opportunities. So Ian Cameron for South Georgia Tormenta wanting to shake things up at the half as Niall Watson comes down to start off the second half. Jackson Corey, a 21 year old from Australia, will enter in his place as we start things off in the second half. those back flags along that hill where the supporters are, that wind still playing its factor in this match. 15 miles per hour as the ball gets lofted ahead by Lombardi. Juan Gabriel Rodriguez was unable to be met, but it comes out of play anyways. Spangler intercepted immediately by Skelton who just sends it off. straight into the Knoxville end to nobody. So it's just going to reset the play with Sean Lewis. Final match of week four in USL League One as Rudy Castro is all alone on a breakaway, but it's too far for him anyways. Flag was up regardless, so it doesn't matter if Castro was gonna get that one or not. He was not going to take the possession. Short week in League One, only four matches being played after 
Chattanooga had their match postponed. So it's the fourth and final match of the week. Both teams have a potential opportunity to leapfrog Greenville for first place in League One. Parker sends it all the way down, but Spangler just overruns that one as he bangs into James Thomas. And Thomas is slow, but wins the foul. Knoxville wants this one deep, falls right to the feet of Kelly. Kelly dodges Spangler. Kelly cuts through the middle. Still has it out wide, Stuart Ritchie. Ritchie has so much time and space, will retreat for Haugli. A little bit too far, Rodriguez with a turnover. Tormenta, Akoto. Right at the center line. Advances upward, Jackson Corey. Couldn't quite slice through the wall of defenders. I'm sure Mark McKeever's got to love everything he's been seeing, just knowing that his team has really been absorbing his message throughout the first couple of weeks inside of the season, saying that in the first season, it was a lot about teaching these guys the system, and now they've been able to absorb it. It's a lot of less teaching, a lot less educating, and really creating that stability for the franchise. He compared the stability to the roots of the apple tree, and the results have just been the fruits of their labor. Akoto. The touch-up from... Kelly comes all the way back for Preston Kilwine, tries the long ball for Spangler on the near side, but is out of his reach. Ajmer Spangler wanted the give and go but it was not available. Doyle. Corey. Corey in only his third match of the season was unable to play last week as he was off on international duty with Lebanon as it comes to Akoto. Has Rodriguez along the far side, but just in front of the Knoxville back line, offside. back in play, unable to retrieve it out of danger before Lewis just sends it off. Castro, Kelly. Slipped along the way but found Thomas who had to retreat all the way back to Chrysler. And now Jordan Skelton holds. Bit of a pass gone awry so Tormenta takes it on the throw. Lombardi drives forward. Rodriguez had the pass. Lombardi slammed down. And now 
Silver Howley will take a booking. He just got Howley with the collision on Lombardi. Shoulder to shoulder, so it wasn't really a play on the ball. So Tormenta could potentially have the ability to generate something with a stoppage. Steedman on it. Short ball, Spangler. Spangler! Sent away by Lewis, but captain again by Tormenta. Another chance goes, blocked up in front. Steedman tries to get it through the barrage of defenders, but no one was able to let it through. Castro deep. Kelly able to find the open man. Now Kelly is the open man. Sprints along the near sideline. Kelly, the lone goal scorer at the 36th. All the way back for James Thomas. Players down for Knoxville, deep inside of the Tormenta side. It was Kelly who's down. And he's making his way back. Knoxville comes away with it. Angelo Kelly along the near side. Lofts it to Frank Ross. Ross squaring off with Lombardi. Ross wanted to center, but it got chipped by Lombardi on the way towards the end line. So another corner for Knoxville. They had six in the first half. This brings them to seven total. With 12 shot attempts for one Knox. Tormenta still with only two shot attempts on the game. You can see how the conditions are continuing to affect things. As Richie sends it in, unable to get the swing. But foot race back, Kelly out of his reach, so Thomas has to collect. James Thomas up high. Richie. Unable to keep that one in play, wanted Haugli. But it was just a little bit off target. So we intend to throw to Haugli. Any interception comes for Knoxville. Castro wants Kelly. Kelly trying to find the open space. Kelly, starter steps, finds a lane. Takes the shot, but it was saved up in front by a Tormenta defender. And a whistle stops play, referee rules it in favor of Tormenta. Quick to Spangler, and has a man open on that far side. A Little bit out of range for Corey. This was the last opportunity, Castro had Kelly, and just, Kelly has just been able to Take out the guys up in front. We saw those defenders for Tormenta chasing Kelly. They might be slipping on the way towards that square off. But nonetheless, Tormenta has only allowed the one goal. As the ball gets played all the way back, Fort Parker. Offside, Rodriguez, Knoxville ball.
head official calling for the trainer as one of the Knoxville players is not only down, he's not feeling right at all. match in favor of one Knoxville 58 minutes in up on his feet is Dani Fernandez, the 26-year-old from Spain. He's very slow on his feet to get up. He's limping off of that right foot. Had himself an excellent game last week, was able to produce on the defensive end today. Earned Team of the Week honors last year, three tackles, two clearances, amongst other things. Comes off to the sideline. And is there an opportunity here for Mark McKeever, he's gonna take it. And Shuti, Calixtro, and Vanderplume are all on deck. So Innocent and Shuti will come in with James Thomas coming out. Gio Galixtro will come in in place of Frank Ross. And Yesen van der Plum replaces Danny Fernandez. So just like that, three changes for Mark McKeever. Just like that, in the 60th minute. Back in play. Too far for Knoxville. Finds his way back for Fort Parker. Intercepted by Knoxville. They look to maintain possession. As they look for the seam ball. And Shuti from a wide angle hits the outside of the frame. Innocent and Shuti right off of the bench. Already producing an opportunity as that pass on the wide side for Rudy Castro. Had and Shuti, who beat his man Dangler, was unable to make the roster last week due to being on international duty with Rwanda. But the lofted pass finds the intended target, Spangler. Kelly chasing Spangler. And the strip from Angelo Kelly. Lombardi is taken down by Calixtro. 23-year-old who is in his second season with Knoxville. Spent the last two prior with Tucson of League One. Just coming off of that substitution at the hour mark. And Shuti goes for goal, but it's just a little bit wide. Innocent and Shuti making his impact early. As he just had the wide open space, drills that one. Parker with the dive, but it was just out of reach anyways. 
We mentioned he was on international duty with Rwanda last week, so he was unable to play only his second match in his League One career. He was able to score in World Cup qualifiers to try to get something for Rwanda. Coming off of the Rwandan League for his first and second matches in League One in the first couple of matches. And now ball gets played all the way back. For Knoxville, Richie has an open lane. Richie wants Calixtro, but stepping up to get the clear is Dangler. Kelly. Chrysler wants Richie on that far side. Akoto watching him, Richie, service, out. Richie again. Just lets that one deflect off of Akoto and out of play for the throw. No, actually, just barely in bounds. Maybe some wind assist on that one. But regardless, Knoxville keeps it in. Still controlling possession, just a touch over 60%. As the stretch pass for Castro was just a little bit too high. And now another sub is coming for Tormenta. Mason Turnbridge will come out. And the 26 year old Brazilian, Pedro Fonseca on the way in. Substitution for South Georgia Tormenta in the 64th minute. Entering the match is number 10, Pedro Fonseca. Fonseca in his fourth two, match, two, started two, the other three. So it's his first app off the bench in 2024. Steedman also got booked along the way throughout the entire substitution process as Tormenta is now deep inside of the Knoxville end. Wanted to chip it, Fonseca is just over the post. Fonseca in Inshuti off of the bench, almost on the board. Two shots, one for each of them as the deflection just finds its way, sputtering towards Fonseca, just gets the right foot on, but was just a little bit over the post. Castro. Intercepted by Tormenta. Akoto. Just a little under 25 minutes to go in this match. Still 1-0 in favor of Knoxville. As Kelly takes the aggressive collision against Lombardi. And he'll win the whistle. It's just a bit of a late tackle for Aaron Lombardi. Really wanted to get the Aggressive tackle on Kelly. Now Kelly is slow to get up. Might be calling the training staff again. As Kelly 
if he does not come back in this game, it's not without his contributions. Scored that opening goal in the 36th minute, the only goal of this match. So the question for Knoxville, especially if you're the training staff and Mark McKeever is, do you want to potentially risk that further down the line? Potentially take that sub? Or do you let him keep playing the match, try to work through it? He's been just a catalyst of offense for Knoxville. And when we asked Mark McKeever to describe Angelo Kelly, he said both him and Stuart Ritchie because of their accolades from last week on Team of the Week, but especially for Kelly, that they show up with a consistent and constant positive attitude. And in the locker room, they're a little bit quieter. You might not necessarily hear them or have the biggest personalities when you see them, but the second they get within the white boundaries of the pitch, the exact words from Mark McKeever was, they stand at maybe 5'7 and 5'8, but the second they walk inside those white lines, they play like they're 6'5. It just shows the impact that they've had. He goes down again just before hitting the sideline. And I cannot blame Mark McKeever for doing what he's going to do, subbing Kelly off. Joshua Ramos will take his place. So those are some big shoes for a 23-year-old. For Joshua Ramos, that's the fourth sub for Knoxville. Interesting, so the PA announcer said it was Ramos, but Coach McKeever must have changed his mind the last minute. But nonetheless, Knoxville sends it all the way deep. Easy grab for Ford Parker. Richard Ballard comes in, 30 years old, from Louisville. Coach Ian Cameron using up the couple of more subs as that ball got sent in deep in the Tormenta end and Shuti tries to save that one from the touchline, able to. Sent into the box, headed! Richie is a little bit too high. Innocent and Shuti continuing to make his impact, just saving that ball just off of the end line to set up Richie right at the center. And now Okoto has it for Tormenta. Fonseca, turnover. Richie has some space available to him. How will he use it? Richie, interrupted along the way by Josh Ramos. 23 years old was unavailable last week for international duty with the U.S. Virgin Islands. We also saw Tavia Dalmeida step in, 23-year-old from the Ivory Coast, making his third ever appearance in League One. As in Shuti, wide for Richie. Richie and Shuti collides with Lombardi, and Lombardi just able to get enough touch on it to keep it out of the box. But Richie has it again. Richie advances. Richie off target. He wanted his second goal of the season. He wanted to beat his career high in goals, but was just out of target. Stuart Richie he saw his fellow teammate Angelo Kelly come out and just said, fine, I'll do it myself. 
as the ball just rolls its way to Parker. Four substitutions for Tormenta and for Knoxville. So one left for both sides. Tormenta with the ball. Long drive on the far side, Akoto. Unable to find Rodriguez as it gets interrupted along the way by Callum Johnson. Can't watch the match? Turn on Sirius XM FC 157. North America's only 24-hour source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Plus, hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more. All on Sirius XM 157, the new Sirius XM app as well. Spangler. Spangler makes a man miss, got another one to go. Gabriel Rodriguez retreats all the way back, so finds it wide, Lombardi. Lombardi chips this one into the box, unable to find anyone, so it's just gonna be cleared out by Jordan Skelton, but Tormenta keeps it with just a little over 15 minutes to go in the second half. Return feed, out of range for Ramos. Both teams have really had a back and forth second half. Both teams getting shot attempts. Four for Knoxville, three for Tormenta in just the second half alone, but none have found the frame. And still only three shots on net, all of them by Knoxville in the first half on 18 shot attempts on the afternoon. Lick showing the throw in. Vanderplume. All the way back for Jalen Chrysler. Drive Stuart Ritchie out of his reach. And Knoxville will use up the final substitution. As Kempes Tequila will take place of Rudy Castro. Played his first ever League One match last week versus Lexington. Coming from Germany, spent the last six years across Europe in Germany, in Denmark, and in Luxembourg. In his second ever League One match played. Subbed on at the 76th minute. Knoxville advancing, and Shuti with it on his feet, and Shuti held off by Parker. Innocent and Shuti, we've been talking about him ever since he came off of the bench at the 60th minute, just continuing to just put the pressure on Parker, despite not necessarily hating anything on net. 
Can't say it's not for lack of trying. Four shot attempts, one on target in only 17 minutes on the pitch. Knoxville turn it over from Tormenta, now have an opportunity. Just unavailable to find any space was Tequila. But Akoto weaves past his man and has an open lane. Options available. And Nick Akoto. Jackson, Corey. Corey drives for the net. But it's stopped along the way. Potentially a little bit by Mother Nature as that one just swerves its way off net. Just a lovely 75 degree day. Those 15 mile per hour winds continuing to just swirl around. It's been the same all game long. The majority of the time it's been southwest, which is essentially, it's on the crowd side, the stand side, but it's also been changing constantly. You see it sometimes, it's blowing towards that crowd section, or sometimes blowing by that field house. So Knoxville wants to start things off with three consecutive wins to start off the 24th season. Richie tight, tight along the line. Has a man up in center. Hesitation, a wonky shot, a rebound for Calixtro was Blocked in front, Aaron Lombardi lays the body out. A Knoxville throw. Only about maybe 15 yards from the end line. Richard Ballard had it as well, setting up Calixtro as he takes the return feed off of the throw. It's taken down, Ballard continues to fight, but that one goes out of play. Turned over the other side. Pimenta just barely able to keep it out. Richie plays it back. Through ball quick. He chips it out wide and shooty. E-Football 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship Club. E-Football, free to play, download now. I'm sure it's something for the long flights as Knoxville to South Georgia, I'm sure it's not a quick flight, but offense looking to take flight here as Ballard threatens in the offensive end. Ballard out wide, Richie blocked in front of the box. But Knoxville continuing as Calixtro with the retrieval. Final 10 minutes, Knoxville with the lone goal. Grand total of 26 shot attempts in this match. Only four on target, all of them for the home side. And an aggressive takedown on Inshuti right at center, no call. So Parker just advances it upward.
Lombardi brings it in. Ramos. Guarded by Richie, just goes back for Dangler. And Ford Parker gets another touch on it. Ramos just barely able to hang on, dumps it off, Spangler. Spangler looks for the lane, he still got possession. Tormenta looks to continue to advance. Tormenta still has it, long drive! It got nicked up in front by a one Knox defender. Spangler's been threatening. After coming into the starting lineup, comes out in favor of Sebastian Vivas in his first season in the USL League One. So Spangler's night is over. Vivas comes in, corner for Tormenta. Last off of a Knoxville defender. So Tormenta has it deep. They love to draw level. Knoxville will take whatever result they can get. The three points, if they can hold the league, puts them at the top of the league. If they keep this lead as the ball bounces and ruled offside. USL Championship is on CBS and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches, expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golasso Network and ESPN Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete TV listings. Some exciting matches across the USL at both the League One and the Championship level. The final week. Final game of week four. USL Championship with 11 games tonight alone. Wants the long drive in Shooty. Just able to keep it in bounds, but not for long as it goes with the goal kick. She's saying it last went off the Tormenta defender instead. So it's actually going to be a corner. Callum Johnson for the eighth corner of the match. Headed away. And just barely able to disrupt things. But Enshuti has it. Enshuti with the left footed drive goes high. And innocent Enshuti continue to put on the pressure. His fifth shot attempt, only one on net. Bouncing the ball was just a little bit out of his control. And unable to control is Ramos and stripped away, but Richie unable to keep Fonseca. Hard tackle on Fonseca. So Ballard will get booked. Fonseca. That's an iffy one. Especially so late in the 87, where every possession Tormenta can take, they will get.
Dangler. Vivas. That's Fonseca. Fonseca with a lane. Pass finds its way right on the feet of Rodriguez, who retreats back. So Lombardi has to take it away. Lombardi looks to direct traffic. Corey. Last off of Knoxville, it's Calixtro. So a throw in comes. Lombardi lofting that one, just saved it off of the end line. But overhead. And Sean Lewis is slow. Still down. Knoxville has been getting beat up all game. We saw two of the substitutions. So it just looks like he went for the leap, possibly landed awkwardly. It looks like the left leg is what he landed on. But Lewis has made his way back. Sean Lewis, 31 years old, coming from the University of Oakland. I'm sure he was happy about that upset versus Kentucky in the basketball tournament, but he also leads the league in terms of goals against, second lowest goals against average in the league. Looking to continue this excellent run he's had as we're in the 90th. Lombardi, seven minutes of stoppage. That's what three injury looks will do to you. As it's a turnover the other way, and now Enshuti stripped away by Tormenta. Vivas. Delmeida out wide. Return for Delmeida. Kilwine wants a Koto, blocked along the way by Stuart Ritchie. <laughs> and off of the sideline. Ramos takes it back. Delmeida, unable to keep it in play. Both of these two teams, they Still have some time before they get back into league play, but they'll both be at home for the US Open Cup. Tormenta will host the Savannah Clovers of the NISA on the third before hosting Lexington on the sixth next Saturday. And Knoxville will host the Greenville Triumph, so it could potentially be one of those feeler matches in the Open Cup to see potentially who can get that advantage later on in the season when they do eventually play. But then they'll have next Saturday off before coming back here to Regal Soccer Stadium to host Union Omaha. We're two minutes deep into stoppage. Dalmeida into the box, nothing available. Calixtro with the header out. Just out of reach, Dalmeida just chips this one up. And now Tormenta has to come all the way back. Taking the throw, Kilwine. 
And a fumble along the way, Jackson Corey. Corey centering just off target for Vivas. A quick fumble from Knoxville turns into an opportunity the other side. Corey had Vivas on the crosser. That appeared to be Silver Haugli defending. And Tormenta's opportunity to potentially tie this game might come down to those two guys right there, Haugli and Vivas, and they're scrap in the box. Officials tacked on an extra minute of extra time, so one more minute of life for Tormenta. Corey, Fonseca, Fonseca lofted up, nothing there. Capped in the possession of Tormenta, but not for long. Kilwine at the center circle. Dalmeida. Fonseca again. Fonseca strips away. So Fonseca inward. Drives for the net, but nothing available. Lombardi up in the air, header, and snagged along the way by Sean Lewis. One knock two, please make some noise for tonight's Alliance Brewing Man of the Match. A nice chip into the box by Lombardi. Had his man up in front, but Sean Lewis. He got his first clean sheet of the season last week versus Lexington. Would love nothing more than to make it back to back. Knoxville has possession to try to keep the ball away. And Shuti gets taken down by the other number 19, Talvio Dalmeida, but no call made as we're in minute five of eight of stoppage. Fonseca. Corey. Corey chips it up. That one was headed down, but nothing available for Gabriel Rodriguez. However, there was some life there for Tormenta. They thought they had the corner initially, but it actually gets overruled by Josiah Park, the lead official, and changes that corner to a goal kick. Tormenta cannot keep off the goal kick from Lewis. So just finds his way all the way back for Dangler. Ramos back for Parker. Angelo Kelly's goal in the 36th is still the only goal of the match. Lombardi sprints ahead. Up for Corey, wants the box, but got tipped along the way by the Knoxville defender before it just sputters its way to Sean Lewis. And Shuti headed upward. Tormenta wants to continue to have any last opportunity. Akoto, 
Akoto swarmed. Fonseca knocked down. Continue on, says the head official, before it's just swung at by Richard Ballard. Final 30 seconds of stoppage. Now it's just a matter of when the whistle goes. Preston Kilwine at the center circle. Lombardi. Lombardi, high ball, bounces up for Makoto. And sent along the end line. It was Vanderplume on the swing. Throw in comes for Dalmeda. Dalmeda, nice block from Ballard. And that will do it! Knoxville gets the three point and jumps to the top seed in the standings. Sean Lewis gets his second consecutive clean sheet and his second of the season. A one nothing win for one Knoxville. Came at the 36th minute, that's all it took to take down Tormenta. And now Knoxville starts off the season, three straight wins and the top of the table. Take this, you know what? Back here for the final time at Regal Soccer Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, where the home side, one Knoxville, takes the one nothing lead over South Georgia Tormenta and the number one overall seed in USL League One. Despite the low scoreline, it has been eventful to say the least. Where Angelo Kelly is generating the offense all around with that first shot attempt off of the leg of Silver Haugli and just opportunities galore. Another chance came along for Rudy Castro, which just barely cleared off the line for Aaron Lombardi. But the 36th minute was all it took. The only goal of the match from the 31 year old Honduran, Angelo Kelly from range. Just absolute precise power and precision. Just an absolute beauty. And this goal, dare I say, it might not just be a goal of the week nominee. That might be coming round at the end of the season. But Tormenta fighting back the rest of the way. And Sean Lewis was absolutely spectacular all the way through. Tormenta looking for the opportunities. But it wasn't just Sean Lewis, it was that swarm of white sweaters inside of the box. An innocent and shooty coming off of the box. Just right then and there, one of his six shot attempts since coming into the game at only the hour mark. Here's another one for Enshuti. As mentioned before, one of six shot attempts for the Rwandan International. Ford Parker could only do so much. Tormenta tried everything that they could to send that one into the box. Lewis had to be perfect, and he was for the second consecutive game with a shutout. And one Knoxville 
jumps to the number one overall seed for pole position in League One. That does it for us here in Knoxville for our entire ESPN Plus crew. My name is Ryan Lee. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your night. Angela Kelly from Rage is gone! Copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.